Good evening. I'd like to call a Monday, December 19th, 2022, uh, Berlin Select Board regularly scheduled meeting to order. With us are Flo Smith to my left, Joe Staub to my right. I'm Brad Town. Um, uh, uh, and with us also is uh, Vince Conti, our town administrator, and Diane Isabel, our town treasurer. Uh, additions or changes to the agenda? Yes, we have the we have to finish the business with the Maplewood liquor and tobacco license. Uh, we did not uh, approve that at the last meeting when we discussed it. It somehow slipped through, and we have a request to move the listers to second on the agenda. Uh, they okay. have uh, some travel to, to do tonight. Yep. Uh, any public comment? I, I just said one thing, Brad. I'm sure. Jonathan Goddard. I'm the, one of the Berlin representatives to the uh, WCUSD school district. And I was just requesting that the town mail out the school district ballots along with the other uh, town ballots for town meeting day in March. I don't know if the select board has already gotten a letter to that effect, but I believe the school district was going to send a letter uh, requesting that the, the town uh, mail out ballots to all the eligible voters in, in Berlin. And we're doing that in all the towns uh, for the school district as well. Yeah. So that's all. We were going to discuss that later. <laughs> yeah, that's on the agenda for tonight, as a matter of yes. fact. Oh, okay. Yeah. Very good. Rachel put it on the agenda. So. <laughs> I've got kids coming in from on the train, so I didn't know whether <laughs> I'd be able to wait that long or no. not. So, yeah. um, I'll wait a bit. Thank you. I, I take it that you're in favor of that. I am in favor of that, yes. Yeah. Thank well, you. Any other public comment? Um, Hilltop meeting request to the board. Good evening, folks. Uh, my name is Phil Zallinger. Our, our office, I'm here on behalf of Durga Inc., which is the owner of the Hilltop. Uh, our firm has represented Durga since they acquired the property from the Lugu family some decades ago, a number of decades. Uh, I'm here to question the select board as to whether the select board would be interested in entertaining a discussion with Durga that might lead to opening up more rooms at the hilltop. When you say opening up more rooms at the hilltop, for what? I, well, I, I paused the Supreme Court pause. <clears throat> there, there are presently 80 rooms available at the hilltop. I believe 60 are occupied by folks who are staying there under the guise of vouchers issued by the state of Vermont from the Department of Families and Children. And that leaves 20 vacant rooms. We understand that the state of Vermont has put a lid on assigning those rooms to other people who have vouchers by reason of disappointment or negative impact or feedback from the town of Berlin to the state authorities. Um, we're wondering if there's any kind of a discussion we could enter into in which Durga might facilitate security purposes, security efforts by the town of Berlin at the hilltop in return for opening up some of those rooms. There's a demonstrated need and demand for those rooms. I think Rick Angelus could testify to that. Um, uh, and Durgat is well aware of the difficulties that have arisen. They've been dealing with the town and the town's force for some time in an effort to get a handle on it. But we'd like to explore whether the town's interested in a discussion about there being a further contribution from the property owner to the town to offset some of the security expenses the town incurs. We don't we're not gonna we're not gonna make a proposal unless 
the town select board's interested in hearing a proposal. Chief? Questions? Yeah, uh, how many how many calls are you getting a week over there? Um, last I checked, which was on Thursday or Friday, we had from October 1st to Friday, December 15th, approximately 83, 84 calls, somewhere in that neighborhood. So we're still getting a suite that come out of calls. Um, what is more concerning to me is this consistent information we're receiving from residents and sometimes the staff of the Hilltop, that they're being discouraged from contacting the police when they need them. A few weeks ago when I met with the owners, I was told that this was an outright rumor, misinformation, not accurate. But when I spoke to the chief down at Rutland, he was saying that they were hearing exactly the same thing from the guests down there. Same pattern of type of behavior, uh, from that hotel as well. Okay. So it, it's not only that we're dealing with whatever problems happen at the hotel, which you would expect in an increase in population, some people facing substance use issues and mental health issues, but it's also a pattern I feel from the ownership that's being somewhat obstructive um, and doing more over there, and being more proactive over there. Okay. Flo, anything? How? Looking for a consensus, consensus mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know that we've had discussions in the past, and there was the concern in terms of the amount of time, the effort, the impact on um, you and your staff. <clears throat> About how many, so in terms of um, the discussion tonight, how many rooms would you say are a result of those 83 to 84 calls? Do you yeah. see it's repeat it's, offenders it's or across the board? a small number of people that are causing majority. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Really, it's not representative of the majority of people. Okay. Okay. But the more people you have there, the more problems you have there. It's simple math. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would say overall, in terms of my own take, is to take it under advisement to have an opportunity to talk with all board members um, and look at everything thoroughly. Um, but Joe? Um. I think uh, what we hear from the chief, there are just uh, there's a small group, um, but I think overall, as far as let's say on the on the fire side, you know you have residents who are um, tampering with with detectors, um, and and that's you know allowing them to, to smoke in their rooms they believe, which then resulted in. Uh, mutual aid call where a fire was on the second floor. Um, you know, Barry City, Barry Town, Williamstown, um, Berlin, all responded to that. Um, you know, that's, in, in the end, it was just a trash, okay? But that was also, um, that takes a lot of resources right there. And I think it's the control of the residents is we don't necessarily see that. Mm -hmm. and to further comment on that, no one really evacuated the building. So officers were going there to help evacuate if there truly was an emergency. And <clears throat> no one was taking it seriously. And that's reflective, I think, of the staff that they need to be regularly drilling fire, fire alarms and encouraging guests that if there's a alarm, need to evacuate. Um, because had it really been a fire, mm -hmm. that would have been a terrible tragedy. Right. Or even if the damage to the building of now people are displaced, it's seven o'clock at night in the middle of winter, it's pouring rain, it's 30 degrees outside. What am I going to do with 30 displaced people? I, I, I don't know, Rick, what would happen? <laughs> yeah. It would, would be or a heavy lift, to say the least. Sure. Mm -hmm. And the communication with the ownership? Has that increased or your ability to reach the owner uh, when there's issues or have communications? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Do they still have a security company there? They have presence in some way. I don't think I, re I noticed that in the last couple calls. They hired a security company a few months ago that was unlicensed and unregistered with the state, which is criminal. 
Secretary of State's office came out, spoke to the staff and the owner. There were a lot of excuses, a lot of back and forth. But ultimately, the solution uh, was for the owner to hire them privately and reclassify the terminology of which they're employed. Any other comments on this? I can't speak for the rest of the board, but I'm not really in favor. There's just too many problems and too much cost to the, to the town for the rewards that, that uh, we're seeing. Um, I don't know what else you would like, but... Uh, it, from my understanding, the arrangement they have in Rutland Town is they gave some sum of money to the town because they were having issues with a retail establishment that was in close proximity to the hotel. There was an increase in the thefts and general disruptive type of behavior. <clears throat> so the hotel owners paid for a position for an officer to be placed permanently at that business um, or in a more visible manner. Uh, I, I don't have the ability to do that. Even if you pay for another officer, I have to find an officer and then that is just not feasible. I'm yeah. glad you broached on that subject because yeah, I was curious about that. To, to pay somebody to be stationed over there, I'm not sure that logistically I can make that happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, talk. Brad, I mean, it, and Chief, you probably know this better than, than I would, but is there a model for like a fee for service that if you get called out and that then there's a, the ownership? pays uh, for, for something and I mean there it's it's a financial burden to them they may be more proactive to to, to it's certainly something that we have a model for when we respond to alarm call calls wow. but not again I have a concern that it would lead to discouraging people from yeah. call because now it's a financial yeah. burden. So. Mr. Zalinger do you have something well I was just going to point out that <clears throat> there, there hasn't been any even a broad outline of what Durga might propose to the town. So I think the chief's reference to the experience in Rutland County is, is, isn't applicable. And I think it's unfair to use that model as an outline of, of what is what might be presented. I don't know what other model though. It just seems from my perspective as the chief of police here, unethical for there to be any exchange of money with a private business uh, for some kind of services in return. Right. We don't do that with anybody else in town. I understand that, Chief. I've been doing business no. in, in and that's that's my personal for, for some time, so I, right. I appreciate that. Whether or not that's like a legal or an outright ethical violation, I don't know. But from my own personal Really push the, line. Well, the model is, is something I've never seen, and I guess I'm old enough to remember when, <laughs> when, um, when owners of buildings uh, paid to have their windows protected from being broken. <laughs> yes, I don't want to go down that. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> The two guys at the corner said, hey, we'll protect your windows from getting broken. You know what I mean? Wink, wink. So, um, but the, the model is not, it's not an attractive model, uh, but it was meant, at least in Rutland, it was, effort was entered into, and I represent, it's a different company in Rutland, but I represent them as well in, in those discussions. But it was an effort to stem the, to quiet the situation, quiet the waters. Uh, I, I think it has, to a certain extent. Um, but I would also point out, and here's an anomaly to this situation, that is if you have a population in, let's say you have <clears throat> 60 rooms, and as we folks acknowledge tonight, there may be a small number of bad actors. Chief knows better than that. And let's say there's, there's the occupants of 10 rooms are those bad actors. Those 10 rooms out of 60. Well, those individuals can be shown the door. Yes. The issue is that if the state's not, um, if they're looking to end this program eventually, and eventually the money's going to run out, 
um, or if they're putting caps on how many vouchers they're handing out in any particular place. Um, there's some negativity in exiting those people because now you're losing revenue, right? So if you have 10 bad actors and you're not going to replace those bad actors, that's lost revenue. So um, I'm somewhat discouraged from exiting people. I, that was the point I was going to make, Chief, is if you're, if, <clears throat> If there's no incentive to, to replace to get rid of those ten bad actors if the state won't replace I'm, occupants we'll, we'll end up exiting those, of those bad actors. actors. Mm -hmm. they uh, continue, I'm sorry? I said we'll end up exiting those bad actors one way or the other if they continue to grow and cause problems. They won't be allowed to stay there because they've put themselves in a situation from a legal perspective where they can't be. My point was that if the state has a lid on the referrals to the facility and if the owner takes steps to replace some of the bad actors but they're unable to make those rooms available for new, new tenants who may not be bad actors, then you have a fly in the ointment for how efficiently it can operate. That's just an observation. <clears throat> this is not an easy situation, not from anybody's perspective. We understand that. Point taken. Thank you. I'm just to point out, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Sawyer has joined us. Okay. Uh, any uh, insights on this, Dave? Well, no, I kind of came in late on this, so I didn't hear the whole thing. But uh, you know, I'm aware of the situation and what they where they're trying to to get more beds up there, which is needed. But the problem being is, 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 is everybody knows that it's it's been a drain on the town of Berlin's police force and all the extra time being spent up there. Um, I just don't think that that personally that they have enough um they're, they're just too much willy-nilly free free roman when they give these people these vouchers up there and and it's not all of them but the ones that are creating the problem are creating a problem big enough that that it, it draws attention to the whole place can i make a comment here? sure Hi, I'm Rick D'Angelo, so I'm the director of the Good Samaritan Haven, and uh, uh, I don't work for the ownership. Uh, we have services at the hilltop, but we're paid by the state of Vermont. And um, I'm surprised by the number of police calls, quite frankly, because we we were up there at the beginning of COVID for a year and a half, and then we left for about a year, and then we came back again because <clears throat> we felt that we had something to offer and could help the residents. Our perception is that it's much better there than it was previously. And um, it's a calmer environment. It's a more productive environment. We're getting more people out and into housing and stuff like that. And um, we feel like we have a better working relationship with the, with the ownership right now, quite frankly, than we ever did before. And um, so, and I, I'm not here to, you know, to, to make an argument one way or other, but I just wanted to give you our perspective that um, we think it has gotten better there. And I do think it's a few bad apples that are creating a lot of these calls. And it's really tragic because these are the only motel rooms in the state virtually. So you have a lot of people out there that are looking for some emergency housing. And um, unfortunately, there's just not enough of it. Thank you. Thank you. Again, Laura, I'd like to say, no. go ahead, Dave. I'd, I'd like to say another thing too that 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 it, knowing that this this was set up as a hotel, it wasn't meant to be a uh, an apartment or anything for for long term living, and 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 I just have concerns that you know the not not just the welfare of the people staying there, but the staff and everybody else. Also, you know, because it, it wasn't set up as a long term living facility and, and there's a lot of stuff up there that I, I think is being overlooked that that 
will lend into uh, you know the the safety of the people up there as well. So, Mrs. Allinger, exactly what is it that the that the, the Durgas want from the town? Our understanding is the state of Vermont has will not send more individuals with vouchers to the hilltop by reason of the town's objections. However, they were communicated to the state of Vermont through the funding source. Yeah. <clears throat> Durga would like to enter into a discussion with the town of Berlin in which that ceiling or that lid on the number total number of rooms might be lifted if Durga was able to provide the town with the means through which to enhance security and responsiveness at the site. The thing I'm thinking of here is if the cap on the state funded uh, residents they still can rent to uh, travelers the other 20 rooms. Am I correct? Technically, yes, but it's you wouldn't be surprised to learn that that's a mix of <clears throat> occupants that isn't very successful to the traveling public. In other words, the use of the other 60 rooms for that, for the voucher purposes, pretty much precludes the, <clears throat> the use of those other 20 rooms for the hospitality industry. So, question. You're saying the state won't send any more <clears throat> residents with, with vouchers there? And that's because we've already hit our ceiling, right? No. No, they won't send them anyway. I guess I've repeatedly shared some of my concerns over the last okay. year. Okay. They've kind of suspended adding any additional vouchers over there. You know, one of the other things, and we don't really talk about a whole lot, is all the EMS calls. I don't necessarily think we're going to see it, you know, tomorrow, but the next contract with the increase of the calls that EMS has gone there, the town will see an increase in that contract and not just because of inflation. <clears throat> Does the Durga group, are they, um, uh, trying to think how to phrase this, why weren't they here to uh, express their uh, uh, desires to uh, have that increased. It was my advice to them that I attend, and okay. I wasn't sure how many members of the select board would be here, yeah. but it was my opinion that it would be better to learn first from the select board if they wanted to have that discussion rather than put you on the spot and start the discussion without any preliminary uh, assurances of your interest in pursuing. And, and that's I, it's not my first select board appearance. And I just know how select boards like to work and they don't, they don't like to be surprised. You like to be able to think about things before undertake them. That's just the way governance works. And it was my recommendation that, that they not attend and not, <clears throat> not spill over into evidence and assurances and reassurances and their <clears throat> characterization of what's transpired and what's going to transpire. That's it's all evidence that you'd have to hear later, but I want to make sure you are willing to hear the evidence first. Okay. 
So basically, you'd like to be put on the agenda for another future <coughs> meeting? If the select board were interested in considering it, yes. Okay. Have a motion on this? Anything else, Dave? I'm just, the, the, the number of residents up there now and vouchers up at there now seem to be, what, what is that number? 60. 60. It seems that over in the past that there was a number that seemed to be manageable where our calls went down at the, on the, the police side of it. And I thought that number was somewhere around 50 and we're at 60 now. Have our calls gone up here in the last, since, since it's got to that 60 number? Not significantly, no. How many rooms were the, was Durga Group looking to rent in total? We'd like to have the opportunity to rent 70. Would be additional 10 rooms. And how many rooms total over there, 83? 80, I believe. 80. And with, with the opportunity that if we were able to take affirmative action with some of the the bad actors, for want of another characterization, that we would be able to replace those folks so that, I, I, you see, I, I don't know, the, the chief made his voice heard at the, at the sources of funding, and I'm not sure how the ceiling works, how it was expressed, what the assurances are, I'm, I'm not sure the select board knows, uh, but for some reason, there are no, even if we lose an occupant, we're not able to replace them because the way the state operates their funding source of vouchers, they put a hold on it and the hold stays there regardless of what the census becomes. So for example, if there are 10 bad actors and we <clears throat> took steps to remove them and successfully remove them, there's no mechanism by which Durga can approach the state and say we have 10 vacancies that we created by replacing bad actors. Could we have 10 more voucher clients? Uh, there's no, there's no uh, formula for that to operate and act and actively be initiated. I meant it just to say that we're going to free up give the green light to free up 70 rooms. Those rooms necessarily are not going to be single occupancy rooms. So that's something to consider as well. Good point. I might, the hotel owners are doing this for profit, correct? This is not a non I'm sorry? The hotel is a profit business, right? It's not like the Good Samaritan where it's a non-profit business. <coughs> We're talking about somebody's bottom line. <coughs> But, but you're right, Chief. But it's also not the behavior and activities of the owners that are giving rise to the are giving rise to the conduct that necessitates but calls. They're in the business of making money, correct? Yeah, I, I did. Yes. yes. So, I mean, that's ultimately what it comes down to: is that they're looking to make more revenue. Go ahead. Can I ask a question? Sure. No. Uh, Rick's here. He, he seems to have knowledge of of his organization <clears throat> down there. I, I don't think there's problems down there. I, I haven't heard any problems. At, at, at Rick's down at the Twin City Motel? I'm, I'm just saying. Mr. DeVangelis is in a completely different situation. I, I understand that. Yeah. And there aren't. That occasionally there's problems, and we, we cooperatively address them. What are they doing that they're not doing? That's what that's the well, question. I'm, gonna, I'm just they're trying to get have a little more freedom to exit people who are problematic. There's no obligation for them to stay here. If they one they show up and cause problems. Is the ownership of Hilltop present um, on a consistent basis? Or at the building? Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. Because I think about your question, what are they doing versus what are 
is not doing, and it sounds like you have a great presence at your facility. I'm just wondering what the presence is of the ownership at a hilltop, and if maybe an additional presence um, on the I, I part of what ownership. Is doing, mm -hmm. They do provide quite a bit of support, which mm -hmm. I think is helpful, but the, the bottom line is getting people out of there. Right. right. They moved on to some kind of more permanent housing. Which sounds like you're successful it's at doing right now. People have, they're leasing a motel room. They have certain rights mm -hmm. for that motel room. We're operating a shelter. Right. And um, as the chief said, you know, we can exit people almost immediately. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit different process. It's a different process in a motel. Um, and we do have a fairly intensive staffing model down below. But we do have staff at the Hilltop, too. And um, again, for what it's worth, in my estimation, it's gotten much, much better. And that's what I was getting at. Is your your presence at the hotel has been a helpful presence. But still, I think the model there is, even when you're interacting with people at the hotel, you're encouraging them to find more stable, more permanent housing. Right. <clears throat> I have yeah, questions. Man. It's just bugging me just a little bit. We, we had a pretty good conversation here, but I just, for my own education and and whatnot, I, I I get the feeling that we're missing a player in this. The elephant in the room that we're not talking about is right. There's the hilltop, there's the town, and there's the state program, right? And that that's part of the issue of what keeps coming up that we keep talking about. I think my opinion as a resident, I'll, I'll give it. I'll go that route. My opinion as a resident is. The, the state should be in this conversation. They're a key player in this as well. I mean, it, it shouldn't all be on the town shoulders, it shouldn't all be on the hotel shoulders, right? There's a key player here that's not in the conversation. And I would add that we need help. You know, it, it's very obvious, you know, there's just been such a tremendous- in my mind, I say Yes, I think, I think you said it really well, Vince, that the help is needed. Uh, we need all players on board, state included in my opinion. The, I think you have it, but, Chair, um, Rick, is, is your organization able to provide additional resources and services to the Hilltop? Uh, we could increase the level, uh, although we, we're not a security presence. No, no I understand. We're a, a, a service presence. I, gee whiz, I wasn't even aware that there, there were that many calls because we're not focused on that aspect of it. But we could, yes. We'd be glad to. Well, and sometimes the intervention that Good Samaritan provides de-escalates situations, changes directions, changes minds, and w what was a potential call need not result in a call. <clears throat> but that's all conjectural, and I'm not, I'm not a social, social services guru by any stretch of the imagination. Well, let me just pull the board here. Uh, how many of the board members would be willing to sit down with the with the Durga group, the state, and uh, have this discussion um, either in a select board meeting or in a uh, some other venue? To have the discussion? <clears throat> yep. Could do that. Seth? Sure. Dave? I personally, uh, Brad, would, wouldn't would shut the door on any type of negotiation, but I think all the players have to be at the table. Okay. So, yeah, Vince, if you can line up everybody. State included? State included. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Vince, you, you're certainly optimistic, aren't you? <laughs> well, I didn't put a timeline on it yet. No, I, I just didn't. <clears throat> well, I mean, realistically, it's probably something that needs to be talked about anyway, and let's get it over with. Right. 
I think it is important to bring it out into the forefront and have that open discussion. Now, the question is, Mrs. Allinger, are you going to be free at one of those nights? <laughs> you, you, get that, you, you get that 800 pound gorilla down to the table, I'll be here. I, it be Christmas Eve. I, I'd come. Or New Year's Eve. Um, the, the state has, uh, have, has Teflon qualities, oh, yeah. as we know. You know, nothing sticks, kind of slides off. So, um, certainly, if uh, we think. That it's fair to ask, um, and we're encouraged by your willingness to do so. Uh, we'll certainly do what we can to uh, encourage the state to participate. I'd be happy to work with Vince yep. in an effort to do so. Okay, anything else on this p subject? I just want to, it's not my intention to be confrontational with you. It just, I've been here for two years, and it would be nice if for one week there wasn't some <laughs> problem set up. My frustration is not with you. Oh, no. I, I, I understand you picked the wrong, the wrong. It's too bad those were your first two years. <laughs> if you, I mean, none of us, man, did anybody look back to the last three years with fondness? And, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> uh, not really. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Chief. Yeah. Uh, okay. Thank you all for your openness. Great. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Mr. D'Angelo, would you be able to be here too? I'd be glad to be here. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So I'll reach out to you, Mr. Dowling, here too. Okay. Get some ideas on the right people to start contacting the state <laughs> is to poke the poke the bear a little bit. I can you can help me with that. <laughs> well. He knows their number. Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank, thank you everybody for being here for this one. <laughs> thank you. Um, Public Works Board Meeting Budget Review. Tom? Thanks for having me again. Okay. Just share, share some documents. Some of these I've, I've already shared with you in the past. Uh, this is, again, a list of parcels that has the uh, total grand list of the town of Berlin of uh, $507 million. The, the total number of parcels in the town is 1,489. I've asked uh, staff here to give me the value of the parcels that are connected to water and sewer. And the number of parcels in water sewer 369 and uh, the the grand list value of those parcels are 293 million five hundred twenty three thousand uh, dollars the 369 represents 25 percent of the parcels in the town the 293 million represents 58 percent of the tax base so uh, uh, the police works board is is, is, is a lot on its plate, as, as you folks know. Uh, the, the town center, they put in a two and a half million dollar wastewater project to, to service the town center. Um, uh, and so it's what the public's work board is, is asking the select board is to give some consideration to um, and recognizing the value that water and sewer brings to the town and uh, baking into their annual budget um, a line item for uh, for the water and sewer business. Um, so the um, recently the uh, Central Vermont Regional Economic Development Corporation and uh, Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission solicited proposals from every town in the in the Central Vermont area and uh, they reviewed, uh, they were gonna select 10, 10 projects in those towns to go uh, to a state level for further funding consideration. So what I, what I showed you here is the application that, that Vince and I put together um, and for the, our, our Scott Hill Loop, that's the, the, the uh, closing loop on our water system of the of the ten that were selected, Berlin ranked uh, the third highest. 
Um, and so this op offer uh, uh, affords Berlin to go out and now seek some ad ad additional fundings. Uh, so that was good news. We just received this last week. Uh, to that end, the the staff here has applied for Oops. community recovery and revitalizing grant program. They have this is a statewide uh, program. They have forty million dollars to for projects. This is our our application that we submitted for the for the uh, uh, Scott Hill Loop. The maximum amount you can ask for is a million dollars. So we've asked for a million dollars. We have our uh, our initial conversation with the folks from CRRG uh, tomorrow. Um, I expect it to go well. Um, I, I don't know if they know about the, the ranking here that the Central Economic Development Corporation has done, but I'll, they will be, will be made aware of that. So we're, we're looking for some grant opportunity here. The uh, uh, Public Art Board is also applying for a $50,000 grant from the Drinking Water State Revolving Loan Fund that will allow us to do the engineering and final design of that loop. So, uh, so this is just one of many projects that are, are going to come to the town in the, in the, in the relatively near future. Um, the uh, Public Work Board has uh, taken um, uh, an asset uh, a management plan study for their wastewater side of the business. You likely know uh, that the the uh, pump station on Route 302 that 100% of, of the town of Berlin's collected wastewater goes to that central pump station and, and, and is pumped to Vermont. That pump station was built in 1985. Um, you know, it, it is going to be uh, this asset management plan. Uh, it, I haven't seen it yet, but all indications are that we need to be looking at doing some sort of uh, upgrade and maybe replacement of, of that plant. Um, I think the first time that that uh, that pump station got put in was probably with federal dollars, paid a good good bit of it. There's uh, there are no federal dollars today, right? And and uh, so that's uh, a couple projects here. I, I know you folks are looking at a, a capital improvement plan. I really encourage you to to uh, to uh, put some meat on those bones. Uh, capital improvement plan may may hurt budgetarily for the first year, but once you get get that baked into your into your uh, um, uh, your budget, it, it's it's there, right? And um, uh, so the I just want to show you the proactiveness that the Public Work Board is doing. Um, we are not asking for willy-nilly dollars, but uh, we would suggest today uh, a $60,000 annual line item to, for the public's work uh, to, um, to have them move forward with their programs. $60,000 a year is roughly, at today's interest rates, about a million dollars a year of a million dollars of debt service. Um, so it's again, a million dollars is not a significant amount of dollars when we're talking about pump stations and pipes and stuff, especially post COVID. Uh, but it's a start, and I I, I think it it um, it would it would show the public's work board is, that the town is behind their efforts. I, I personally think the public's work board has has done yeoman's work here in the last ten years and and uh, brought a lot of value to the to the town of Berlin. So. I'll take any questions. Um, we've got a lot of good stuff going on, and but again, I, I do really encourage you. Uh, yeah, one, and before I leave, I, I, I do encourage you to to uh, 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 look at baking uh, some capital improvement in your budgets. Uh, the what could help the the public work board uh, immediately is is a some revisions to their. To their water uh, ordinance that, uh, that we'd like to select or to consider. One uh, first one is that because uh, right now 
on, on the water system. If you build a new building, you're not required to connect to the water system. We, we would like that policy to change. Uh, and so that's the first one here, require all construction in a defined service area that uses new or, or significant potable water to connect to Berlin municipal water. Um, the second one is, is uh, the water system is in place. It's, it's there, are, when it was put in place, there was existing buildings. There are, there are numerous buildings that opted not to connect to the water system and they, that was their right. Uh, what we'd like the select board to consider uh, is that those buildings now receive a value from the uh, water system in the, in, from fire protection standpoint. I don't think anybody w uh, can argue that by the town having a water line with, with hydrants uh, on, on a road that the, a parcel a building does not get value from the, from, from the system. And so uh, we would ask the select board to adopt in the water, the water ordinance language, creating a fire protection billing class that those parcels receiving fire protection from Berlin municipal water, but not connected, are charged for fire protection. Um, and I, so I think these two things are things you could do um, and will help write the language to that in. Uh, but if, if um, we don't wanna, we don't wanna spend time or treasury developing that language if, if, you, if the select board is opposed to it. Um, but, I, but again, I think these are two things that help, can help defray the cost and spread the cost over, over additional customer base, which is the idea. So if you have any questions, I'll gladly take your questions. If not, thank you for your time. Um, the grants, is that a matching grant of any sort? Which one? The million dollar. The million, uh, it's, uh, they expect you to uh, come up with the, with the balance to do the project. Okay. So it, it is, it's a, it's a million dollars. We'd have to, we're look then we'd be looking for additional $2 million to, to, yeah. to, to get the project done. And then the 50,000. Fifty thousand dollars is a pure grant. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions for Tom? What's the timeline on both of these? Uh, the 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 the, the public work board will apply for the fifty thousand dollar grant. Mm -hmm. It's no skin, you know. There's no um, skin out of, of of our pockets. So so that will be that will be uh, happening. We'll have to come back to the select board for a resolution of support to that end, um, and so that that will likely happen in in early January. They're they're not meeting again until uh, uh, the second uh, Monday of the month. So it'll probably be your uh, last meeting in January that would come for that resolution of support. Excellent. Um, and for for the for the uh, language in the ordinance. Uh, that's something that we can begin immediately and, and get written up. Um, uh, there are numerous examples out there that, uh, that we could give you draft language, likely at your uh, first meeting in January if, you so, if you're so inclined. Thank you, Tom. Yep. Thank you, Tom. Um, so I do have another one question Tom um, you say all construction so would that be like expansion of current I, I, I put the I put the term in here um, Joe that that if you use new or significant so we, we have to define that right uh, and, and, and in my mind's eye significant would be if you double or, or if you add 50 percent additional water use then you should connect, right? That that's what how I think. I would I I would start the ordinance language that if you add fifty percent additional uh, potable water to a to an existing structure, then you must connect to town water. Any other questions for Tom? Yeah, Tom, on this ordinance thing uh, about the fire protection and being able to charge uh, the the buildings or the owners for the uh, fire protection. It, Based on uh, insurance, they must be getting a break that we have have the uh, hydrants in those areas. So I, they're getting insurances. Yeah, I, I know, uh, Dave. When we when the town put in the water system, their ISO rating and, and and Joe could probably speak better to this than I than I can. But the town's ISO rating, which is insurance, 
uh, uh, what went from a five and a half to a five, so it, it improved 10%. That is somehow correlated to insurance rates. I, I'm not gonna pretend to know the mechanics on how that works, uh, but, but there's no doubt in my mind that the uh, uh, water system and, and the hydrant system have added value to many parcels in the town. Okay, any other questions for Tom? Okay, thank you very much, Tom. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Um, listers review and approval. Uh, so each, uh, every year at this time, we come before you to um, sort of, it's cleaning up the grand list, any errors or omissions that were done during the course of the year, the state says that the select board has to sign off on them so that they know that, that uh, it's mainly to catch big ones, but we still have to come before you with all the little ones. And there's, you know, usually some personal property and then a few that are real estate related. So, um, do you want to explain the personal property ones? I can. Okay, we've got, uh, let's see, I think there's three personal property ones. The first one is a GNC Holdings Company. The business closed, and they didn't tell me, so I sent out a bill, but they'd closed prior to April 1st. So when they got the bill, that's when they called me and said, well, we closed, and they didn't tell me. So so that one was 55900 okay, that they were being billed on. Uh, quadrant, lease, quadrant Leasing, um, that was a duplicate uh, that I built them for. They sent me um, a form saying it was new, and it wasn't. And so I still had the other one from the other uh, from the same location, and I didn't recognize that they were two, both for the same location. So that one was twelve thousand two hundred, and the last one was a company called Fast, and they had moved to Barry prior to April first, and that was seven hundred dollars. So we're looking at one hundredth of that. So uh, the GNC is like, you know, f basically $559. Quadrant is $122 and fast to be $7. That's the basis. So those are the three that were personal property. And the, uh, we had two real estate. Um, one was a parcel that was sold to a new owner and the buyer bought two pieces. So when they're contiguous, we will combine them. The value of the second one will be added to the first one. The state only wants to see what their name once on the grand list. So um, I, I combined them, but I, I neglected to make the, se the second piece inactive. So a tax bill went out on the second piece and it was taxed with the first one. So it was, an, it was a duplicate. And it was a it was a piece of land. It was fifty eight thousand dollars in assessment, which would be five hundred eighty dollars as far as taxes go. And the last, uh, the other one we had was a mobile home that um, was moved out of town that we didn't know about that it left, and um, it's it was right over in, in Lucky Boardman's little mobile home area. So we sent the bill out to the previous owner. The mobile home had been moved, but Lucky's paying the bill. So it's really, there's no loss in taxes. Right, well on that one, I can explain it even further. When um, this resident had moved his mobile, his mobile home out, Lucky's moved one in the next day. So, so they had no way of knowing it. Yeah, it's the we, same one. Right. Yeah, they, they and I, I, yeah. I don't even think the one he moved in was was a new one because it, no. it was an old one so it, i think it was the same size we had no idea that it so didn't switch lucky's is paying um for this one because he does have a mobile home yeah. on that lot right so that one was just like a fluke like say one one, one went out one day and the very next day another one was in and so there like i said there isn't any loss of the tax dollars on that one and those are the only arizona missions we have for this year so six hundred and eighty-eight dollars. And I'll know more than uh, that. Well, six hundred uh, eleven, twelve hundred dollars, basically. Yeah. Uh, let's see. 
I got 1268. <laughs> I rounded okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just, yeah, 1268. Yeah. Tom had a sign from the board. Good. Now the board has to take and accept the errors and omissions. Oh, we hope you will. Yeah. <laughs> 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 these two pages and it's just together. a document that it does it just goes into the vault with the grand list for this year acknowledging if the state should ever walk in here and and say where's your Arizona omissions paperwork it would be in with the grand list so a motion to accept the errors and omissions I make the motion to accept the errors and omissions as described and explained to us this evening by the listers in the amount of twelve hundred and sixty eight dollars I'll second any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. See you Wednesday. Have a good evening. Thank you. <laughs> Now, police budget review. So, real quick in your package, you have uh, two documents. One is a sp specific for the police wages, and the other one is this document, which tells you the details of kind of the breakdown of what changed, what went up, what went down, and what is um, linked to the uh, new union contract as well. Something went down? <laughs> wow. I was, you know, yes, yes. <laughs> Actually, it did. shows you the uh, the costs that went up that uh, really are you know outside of our control with the uh, like the, the, the FICA meds the gas and oil estimates liability um, and other contracted items that we don't directly control I'm going to ask you. Um, so the night shift is that based off changing your your work schedule or nice number of gets, people? It gets paid at a different rate. Okay. And my question is on the um, increase in the guns and ammunition, sizable in comparison yes. to the other two years. Um, the current firearms we have are getting old, um, probably a few years past the time they should have been replaced. So that was factoring in an estimate of what it would cost to replace all the firearms, get new optics on them to uh, better increase accuracy and uh, the accessories that go with them. Thank you.
So when you do that, you're going to be replacing all of them, and it's not like phasing in some. Yeah, it's not really ideal to phase in some okay. because we're looking at firearms that would be a different caliber. Yeah. Ideally, everybody would be equipped with the same at the same time. Thank you. Chief, how often do you swap out your uh, sidearms? Um, I would say probably once every 10 years is optimal. And we're probably pushing on 12. So uh, if you're familiar at all with firearms, springs start to go, so the smaller mechanisms start to go. Is the gym membership widely utilized by the officers? Probably not as much as it should. I think it's a wonderful program. You know, I ask the question mainly because I think it is beneficial mm -hmm. and good, and uh, you know, I would encourage it. Um, but at the same time, the cost, if it's not being utilized, it's, yeah, it's embedded within the contracts. Mm -hmm. It's not and shift in their defense, shift work is hard. It is true. Well, and the way they're reimbursed, also, they bring the what they've already paid. So, if they've gone to Planet Fitness, for instance, they'll bring the bill that they've paid, and then we, we reimburse them. Excellent, that's great. Thank you. Is there any area of the budget, if we were to say, could you pare it down? Is there any area that you've given thought to where you... <laughs> With I, a I, smile, I, though, I see the right. smile. Well, I try not to, I'm not asking for things that are unrealistic, you know, from my perspective. Mm -hmm. These are all things that... And there's probably things on here that should be increased. Uh, Vince and I were talking about it the other day, our administrative fees, uh, everything, well, I tried to get, uh, a good example is I tried to get our policies have been updated, mm -hmm. um, and getting, I want everybody to have a binder with those policies so they can refer them anytime mm -hmm. they need to. Um, so I had started to set, go down to Staples and see how much it would cost to get 10 binders of this policy. We're talking maybe, it's not anything crazy, upwards of $9,000. Mm -hmm. um, so, and that's not something I had factored in here, but do we need to have those things, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm saying I'm on the conservative side, so I, I can't really say something on here that I could get rid of. I do probably, notice. Probably push firearms out next year, but mm -hmm. we're going to run into the same problem next year. Mm -hmm. I do notice that you keep your costs similar, like, for example, the special investigative unit. The cost with the binders, maybe some of that could be done in house, less expensive than taking it out to. A printer. It's just a thought. And, and that's not factored in here, but we're mm -hmm. talking. I just want to interject a little bit. I'll have to do a little bit more legwork because I'm not absolutely positive, but I'm, I'm fairly confident. If if we wanted to pare that budget down a little bit and not lose anything for the chief, like the firearms, those may qualify for ARPA funds. Mm -hmm. right? and we mm -hmm. still have some ARPA funds, and if that's something the board would like me to look at, what's in here that may qualify, mm -hmm. um, I'm happy to do so. That together as well. I think that's beneficial with any of the budgets that come before us to see 
what could fall uh, under uh, the auspices of the ARPA fund. That well. so that's yeah, good. That will, that'll bring the overall price. budget down, but we're still spending that. Sorry, Ms. Francis, we're not I was thinking not, but it's worthwhile to check. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. May under the equipment, if it qualifies under the equipment, it, it may. So I'll, I'll do some research on that and see. Yeah. Thank you, Ben. That is one way to bring the overall number down. I can do. I can take a look at that if the board mm -hmm. desires. And we just moved forward with approving the use of the APRA funds for radio upgrade. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, we did. Uh, and so we have police radio equipment. And so is, is that something different? It's not on. It's uh, just, you know, it's a couple handhelds, mobiles. It's just a couple uh, portables. status quo and what we've paid over the past few years so that really factoring in what okay. we covered by ARPA we have yet to receive those radios and it's, it's getting to be a bit of a crunch time and mm -hmm. there's really no uh, expected date of those things being delivered And I see the cost of the uniforms went down sizably. Uh, but you also have an allowance. Right, right. It actually went up if you mm -hmm. put it together. Yeah, yeah. So to kind of, for me to better get a better read at where we're at, so it, it, part of the contract is the officers have, a, I think, a $600 equipment reimbursement allowance now. Uh, some people utilize every penny of it. Some people probably not. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's always been under the uniform under the equipment line. Yeah. So I could really never track how many people are actually utilizing all of these funds and how many weren't. Yeah. Um, so we broke it down a little bit so I can keep track of uniforms I actually order for somebody who comes, needs replacement, um, mm -hmm. or they're newly hired and we have to get them a whole new setup, as opposed to those people who are just putting in as part of their uh, equipment reimbursement. Makes total the, sense. The, in the next revision of the budget, I just want to bring this up as well, because he hit it on it a few minutes ago as well. Similar things going to happen with administrative uh, costs as well. We've talked to Diane as well. We're setting up another number so that he can track those administrative costs right. better uh, and see where they are. So some of these numbers will move a little bit. That's but great. That, that's one of them. You'll see a new category come up under administration, administrative, um, and it will be mm -hmm. a similar. I think that's very beneficial. Outline version of the budget. There are a lot of things that sometimes fall under one category. So it's hard for me to speak intelligently sometimes of what, what we're spending. Mm -hmm. hmm. Anything else on this? Not for me. I'm good. See the. When does the budget have to be in? Very soon. Usually January. Yeah, it's, it's, last year I think it was like the 14th of January. But again, we gotta give it time to get in there as well. So by the second week of January, we, have to have it we need to really have it wrapped up. Okay. So probably we'll have to look into uh, scheduling at least one extracurricular meeting here to take and probably go through it. Yeah, one one special meeting and one more board meeting, and I think we'll have it. Yeah. Okay. If nothing else, we'll move on to. Thank you, Chief. Thank you very much, no, Chief. Thank you. Um, <laughs> have a good night. We'll move on to um, sure Town Clerk's uh, <laughs> Washington County Unified School District ballot request. Yes. 
So I think, as you heard earlier, <laughs> Jonathan's still here with us. Yeah, he's still on. trying. <laughs> he's hanging on. I know how to sit through a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> So the Washington Central School District would like to have all their um, annual meeting ballots mailed to all active non-challenged voters in the town. Um, I personally have no objection to that. I do want to keep in mind the um, Central Vermont Career Center is only sending out ballots by request. And then so we should also consider our municipal ballots, whether we want to mail them to everyone or only by request as well. Um, so keep that in mind. <laughs> yeah, it's it's the same See. request basically for the Washington County ones as, as what was done last year as well. Mm -hmm. And they do reimburse for the costs of printing and mailing. Um, and if they have a cohesive decision from all the towns, I believe they were going to look into having those printed offsite as well. Um, but I don't know the status of the other town's decisions today. Our last um, election that we sent, how about the last election that we sent ballots out? How many were actually utilized and how many were then done in person? Uh, about a third of them came back before the election day. Okay. Um, for the primary, it was maybe a quarter. Okay, so. at a cost of what, do you know? I honestly don't know. Okay. No, I haven't. Do you know? It might oh, be like 1,200 expensive. or something, you know, okay. desperate to print the ballots. And, you know, I, I'm not putting your time into it. I'm just talking the cost of the ballots themselves. And as far as the mailing, if you mailed it, I don't know what the... Uh, right, the cost of postage. The cost of, because we don't keep track of that. We just keep track of all of our mm -hmm. postage. Mm -hmm. But it sounds like they'll reimburse for the expense, at least for their um, meeting ballots. Yeah. Obviously not the town specific ones. So you're sending these out, they're not all going out in one envelope, they're going out in separate envelopes. In theory, maybe they could go out in one envelope if we decided to do um, yeah, all the municipal ballots. I personally said. think sending all the, the town specific ballot to everybody is probably wasteful. Um, I think letting people request those. Um, too, I don't know if there could be some wording that maybe goes out with the school district's ballots that maybe that's separate from regular town meeting ballots as well. Good point. Well, I certainly see no trouble with mailing out the school district mm -hmm. ballots. I mean, it's already in the computer program, right? <laughs> I can't speak to the computer program, so, but I mean, I know from years prior that, as far as my recollection, that the ballots were mailed as were the town ballots. The district, the school district ballots were mailed yeah. along with, not perhaps in one envelope, but were sent at the same time as mm -hmm. the Berlin town ballots, as far as I can recall. <coughs> Anything, Dave? No. No. So we, we could send out the, the school ballots and do ours as request, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, we get reimbursed by the district. Mm -hmm. for, the, for the school? Okay. The school ones, yeah. You know, short of maybe some some time, mm -hmm. right? Or we send them all out. Is that kind of the question now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And I'm in favor of sending the schools and having the towns be upon request. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I think I an inclusion of a note of some sort in with the school to indicate as a reminder for folks to call mm -hmm. to request a ballot should they so choose. Do you know if other towns are doing I similar don't. communication? No. Yeah, I don't. So, were you, were you phrasing that as a motion? Mm, I could, I could, <laughs> so, so, uh, put that into a motion, let's say. Um, so I make the motion that we move forward with the request to mail the WCUUSD ballots, um, especially since Rachel's in, in uh, agreement with that, and to have our town ballots sent upon request. I second that motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, town meeting request, Rachel? Thank you very much. Yes. Thank, yeah, you. thank you. Thanks Good for holiday. staying. Right. Happy holidays. <laughs> so we are compiling the town report now, and we were interested in doing a dedication page in the front to our local police department. Um, I didn't know if that would be something you guys would approve of. Um, I know in the past it's either, you know, a dedication to someone who's retired or um, has passed away, so. Mm -hmm. I like that idea I do. very much. Yeah. yeah. Does the chief know that? No. <laughs> okay, he doesn't know. <laughs> he won't listen to this recording. <laughs> Is it bad to surprise someone like that? <laughs> no, I think it's even even more special if it's a surprise. Um, but yes, I'm in agreement with that. I think it's a wonderful, excellent, wonderful idea. Dave? I, I would concur. Well, we'll take a motion on this one. We'll just do it by consensus. We can do a written ballot. Yeah. Uh, bids for digitization. Can I ask you? Can I ask you all one more question about sure. town meeting? Um, so I know the last few years has been different with COVID. Um, so looking forward to this town meeting. Um, I assume an in-person town meeting is planned. Um, will that be on Tuesday, March seventh, along with the voting at the school? Everything all together. Um, Will there be a pre-meeting on Monday night, the night before? I personally would like to see it as you just described it this year, especially. I think the time is uh, right for it to... Hadn't we already decided that we were going to do a pre-town meeting like on a Saturday? We did, but I don't think there was any big change in the, in the turnout. No. We thought that perhaps it would, but it didn't. It wasn't reflective of our hope. No. I don't know. We have, I mean, I don't believe there's any big, there's no uh, problems with changing, or is that a town vote to change it? To, to, to change it, because okay, we had voted to uh, have it on Saturday. And I th thought that, I knew there was like a select board vote or something. Yeah, I think it was a select, just a select board. Decision but do, we, but do they have to vote again was, to get a chance? I don't think so because of the, it was all because of, you know, pre-COVID. Um, not so not, much though. They still no. wanted to have it on the Saturday. We had it on a few Saturdays and like you say, there wasn't any extra people. But yeah. I really don't know if they I, have to select what has to I, I think they just have to do, to again. do what, make a motion on what Rachel's proposing. If that's what the board should choose and to do. I don't think there's any, any voting that. Well, I, could, I mean, I don't mind entertaining the motion, but I would uh, like the stipulation that uh, upon uh, this uh, finding uh, f a facts on this. Yeah, yeah. I I'll have to I certainly have to research it and see. But yeah, I yeah. haven't seen anything that leads me to believe otherwise yet. Mm -hmm. Again, mm -hmm. I haven't dug deep into it either. Yeah. Right. I'm just trying to think, did we have it before the voters? The last, I mean, what, must have oh, been back in 2016? Yeah, no, I think it was after that time, but... 
I really almost think it was. I think we had the, the town voted on it. Yeah. To change it to a Saturday, so I okay. I guess I think what I'll do if we can look back and we can look back in the books. Absolutely. That we have, you know, the annual documents, the annual books because mm -hmm. it'll say mm -hmm. something. So as, as long as the motion includes uh, finding a fact and um, other than that, we'll have to be on a Saturday, on that Saturday. Your motion? So moved. I didn't say anything <laughs> close I to I couldn't a, resist. Anything close to a motion on that one. So I make the motion that Vince will research the suggestion regarding um, town meeting and the meeting prior to. Um, and then we'll go forward with a decision from there. I second that. <laughs> uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Um, okay, bids for your digitization. Yes, okay. So we have been researching numbers and companies for um, switching to a digital system, scanning our land records and having those available online. Um, so what I'm hoping is that we could use ARPA funds um, to purchase the system um, and then to scan and index the records. So there is a, um, a company, COTS system. Uh, that is the one that I would love to use if we can. Um, other towns have been using that um, in Vermont. We've been able to check it out. It's pretty great. Um, the system itself would be about $7,500 um, total just to purchase the system to have. Um, that includes um, a workstation for myself and also uh, public researchers when they come in um, and the ability for people to search online. Um, the more expensive part of this project is the scanning and indexing of the records. Um, COTS can do the scanning and indexing for about $61,000. That's for a 40 year look back. Um, the great thing about COT is they could come and scan the land records in our parking lot. So there would be much less disruption to researchers coming in to look for things in the vault. Um, so, but that comes with a price tag. <laughs> um, there is another company, Records Force, who could scan and index the same number of books for $47,000. Um, the only drawback with that is they have to um, take our books away for about 10 business days. So there would be two weeks where we could not have the vault available for um, research. Mm. And, um, and where are they located, Rachel? They, uh, you would ask me that. <laughs> Just curious. They have done a lot. They're in Maine. They're oh, in Maine. Maine. Yeah. Okay. And Records they, Force. Mm -hmm. okay. Maine. Thank you. Um, and so Records Force would give us those digital files and we'd have them and then we would share them with COT who would upload them to their system. Um, we are waiting on numbers from CoFile. That's a third company that could do scanning and indexing. However, um, their intention is to use microfilm images for the bulk of the land records we already have, which I don't think would produce a very high quality image mm -hmm. um, to use going forward. Good point. I yes. personally am not in favor of uh, shipping our land records to Maine. It's nice that they don't leave scary. the property. That that scary. That's why I was asking where they were located, because I concur. Mm -hmm. um, and and uh, there's got to be a liability is, for that. Uh, microfilm is kind of a thing of the past. It's an old technology, really. Yes, yeah. it is. It's not as, usually not as easy to read. Right. Would this all have to be put out to bid? I mean, we're calling around, but we're not really putting it out to bid because we don't have a, uh, uh, when you put it out to bid, you have your... Um, your request for quotes. Yeah. It, well, you, you also have your your set, what, what you, you want. For. Yeah. yeah. A certain set of criteria, and I think that if we went out to bid, we'd have to specify that the records would, wouldn't leave the town, wouldn't leave the town, you know. Yeah, I, I mean... I think it's, to, to be honest, my opinion, it's semantics at this point, because there's only one company that will meet the requirements that we want. 
right? And she's got, she actually has quotes um, to digitize the records in, in general from, from three qualified companies. Two. Well, didn't hear from the third one yet. Yeah, two. Um, and essentially one of them, if we use, we still have to use COTS to get it in the system anyway. Right. Um, so I, I think it's just, we have the information, I think. But this will allow the, the town to be able to function if we have another COVID oh, type situation. Uh, oh, mm -hmm. for sure. Right. I mean, it'll be, uh, from an efficiency standpoint, once it's done, it, it should make a measurable difference. Well, make a huge impact. If I can ask you, Rachel, um, yes. once we do have this all in place, mm -hmm. people don't have to come into the vault, do they? No, they don't have they to. They can come over That's by on choice our if they want to come in, yeah. and right. people can come into the office and not go into the vault and still access through the and just use the, the, the system that we'll have yeah. in place as well. And payments can go right through the system as well. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Online and payments can be made, set up to be made as well. How are our fees for that purpose in comparison with other municipalities? Close in proximity. Our fees. For Our fees for for vault requesting vault and they're not services. Huge. <laughs> not huge. They're small. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, th there's not a lot of difference because I think most of those funds are most of those costs are set typically by the state mm -hmm. by statute anyway. Mm -hmm. There's a list of fees that you can mm -hmm. charge for those mm -hmm. services. Have somebody on wants to speak. Oh, Ms. Leclerc. I am Rosie LeCare and I'm a Berlin resident. I'm also a town clerk who helped train your new town clerk. <laughs> Thank she's you, awesome. Rosie. She's yes. awesome. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to let you know that as the, the fees are set by statute. So Thank you. Research, research fees are pretty minimal. It's $4 an hour for a vault time. It's a dollar a copy for any document that's in the vault. Um, 10 cents a copy for any like a lister card or lister document or something like that. So there isn't any leeway as far as that's concerned. Um, the town where I work does have our records digitized and we are online. The small benefit of that is that researchers that don't want to make the trip from Burlington to the office can go online and they can actually make a purchase online and buy those records. And we still get our, basically the company gets about half and we get half. So you end up with about $1.50 a page. So you're not losing that revenue that you would be getting anyway. Thank you. Thank you. Now can, for the 61,000, It's it, it does qualify for ARPA funds. That I know. I did that research some time ago. And I did have an F estimate out there. Again, I didn't put it in the ARPA fund, but I had it listed of I'm about 50. And then, but that was almost a year ago now, or it was a year ago now, of 50,000. So I'm not surprised that it's 61 now. So those, those costs are, are for what's currently in the vault. And we'll have the equipment to then digitize our own as it soon as it comes in. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, as it moves forward. And and the ability to go further back in time if we wanted um, from the 40 years. If we wanted to add more years in the past, we could do that over time and chip away at it as well. So. And it's actually again the total package is a little more than 61,000. Just to be clear, if the board is, is thinking about moving on, there's also the 7,500 if you right. know, the costs right. on top of the 61. So. It's really 68.5 mm -hmm. total. And when do we have to have those, have the ARC funds uh, dedicated? 20, uh, they have to be, dead. they don't have to be spent or obligated by 2024, end of 2024. And basically this, using the ARPA funds for this will take and will take and make the uh, records more accessible without personal contact. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Your motion. Mm -hmm. 
So before making a motion, are we all in agreement that we would not have to go out and... Um, I would put it out to bid. That's my concern, is yeah. that I feel like we I would, I would put it out to bid and uh, uh, state exactly what you want and see who can, uh, who can take and deliver. Okay. So that way everybody knows what we're looking for. So with Rachel, very, we'll be very detailed on the requirements that we're looking for. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a quick turnaround for them to respond. Like, Two weeks, mm -hmm. right? So we can. Well, I mean, I can't. The, the only, the only thing is, is uh, I mean, the only thing we're really looking for, as far as the details go, is have the records not leave the town. And we don't, we don't want them to leave, right? And we, what we want the, we want the filing uh, system, you know, scan and yeah. file. All right, there's a specific word, index. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. We want it yeah. scanned so and indexed. So the seventy-five hundred, well. that's for the hardware. In the, in the software to do this? Yes. No. Okay. Yeah. And then, yeah. In training. And we mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. We, we, we want them digital. We don't want microfish and so on and so forth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's okay. So we can lay those out, I think, pretty quickly. So I make the motion that we request Vince to do the research and the bid process um, for the digitization of the records for the town of Berlin. I'll second that motion. Any further discussion? Thank all you those for in all favor? Your Thank you. Aye. 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 Motion carries. Anything else, Rachel? No, nope. that's it for today. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening, Rachel. You too. Okay, Vince, the beaver baffles. Okay. Beaver baffles. So you'll see this in your package. This explains it all. Um, basically, it's going to cost eight thousand dollars to put in two beaver baffles, one on Mirror Lake Road and one out here on Crosstown. Um, and this group, the uh, the POW Protect Our Wildlife Vermont, is willing to chip in uh, half the cost of each of the baffles. So they would they would contribute. Uh, Four thousand dollars to the eight thousand um, dollars to to uh, to have those installed. Um, there are some agreements in here that they they are expecting from us for that four thousand dollars as well at the bottom. Uh, maintain the device for the instructions by the installer who would be Skip Lyle, uh, who's state approved. Um, notify him and and the POW if the device isn't working or needs some maintenance. Don't take the device out or let the beavers be killed uh, without addressing the maintenance problems. Um, if the device malfunctions and there's a issue with their, with the property, you know, flooding, whatever, um, uh, then the beavers can be killed as a last resort, but we still need to notify POW. Um, and then again, it's they've got a, a statement in there. Basically, if we don't look to that, then they're eligible to get their money back from us. Question, Vince? Yes. Um, I have who's going to be raking the debris? Did we talk to our maintenance crew? Is is that what, who we are expecting to do? That's this? that's what we're expecting to do. Like now, have we, we talked to them. Uh, well, yeah. Okay. I mean, it's not much. It's a little bit different. It'll probably be a little more difficult maintenance than going over with the excavator and ripping it out like we do now. Right, and it's going to be harder to reach, so it, it, it will be a little more difficult. So, raking isn't necessarily using a power equipment, we're using hand equipment, sounds like probably. Um, uh, again, don't know the details, I haven't talked to Skip Lyle uh, myself yet to understand fully what that means, okay? Right, as far and, as maintenance goes. So, there's all sorts of things about working over water. Yes, there is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. How much does it cost the crew to go over there to take and do a demolition of a dam? Uh, let's see. The last one they did, uh, if, if I include the transportation time back and forth, it was probably about three and a half hours worth of work for three of them to go over, tear it out, to mobilize, 
over, tear it out, and back. What do they do with the debris they tear out? They find a, a local landowner that's got a place for them to dump it. Do you have How often are we doing this? Uh, we've done it uh, three times this year. Now, is that three times in, in one spot or three times between the two? Three times between the two spots. And we did trap. We paid a trapper uh, for uh, two or three beavers. Two. two beavers that they trapped and removed as well prior to the three cleanouts. So, you know, that happened after we took two beavers away. Hmm. Um, what does Tim figure the, the uh, per hour rate for the equipment is? Because you got truck, trailer, estimator, yeah, and three men. I, I think we, uh, we, we booked the trucks at about 35 bucks an hour each. Uh, we book book the um, excavator. I think at is that sixty five or eighty five? I thought it was eighty five. I think it's wrong. I think it's eighty five. Eighty five for, for the excavator. For how many hours? Three and a half. Would be the so. That's way cheap too. Yeah, how does that size? Yeah, it is. In, 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 today's, in today's market, it is. Yeah, if it's what the excavator like that is like one hundred and twenty five dollars an hour. Yep. Yeah. Um, and we're more like sixty, sixty-five dollars an hour for the truck. Oh, the trucks, yep. So, so that's cheap. I don't know. Sometime along, we should probably take and look at uh, call on to a few um, construction outfits and just kind of get it so we have a greater right cost. Yeah. Have a better, well, less. Not that we want to run out the equipment, but just we have a better idea of what what time value of the yep. equipment is. Yeah, I, well, I know it's gone up. You can go to a, the, so. like the FEMA website. Yeah, there, there's a lot of places out there where you can, and, where and I can find those. Current those costs. are federal rates. Yeah, and looking up closely, some of those are equipment and operator. Yep. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Well, um, you want to have a vote on this or put this off till next meeting? I'd like to put it off till next meeting. More time yeah, to it, research. It's not like they're going to be installed mm -hmm. you know, for a few months. Mm -hmm. right. I'm going to give you a chance to take and talk to uh, uh, Skip, yeah, Skip Rodman. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I understand it. Good idea. Right. Uh, he, he's willing, I think, as well to come in and explain. So maybe I can. See if I can get him in as well to mm -hmm. to talk about what it might be looking like for the specifics to these two areas and mm -hmm. uh, and uh, what the maintenance is as well so directly to the board and the pros and cons and when it works well and when it doesn't work yeah. well and you know what could fall short I I'd like that well I mean the other thing is is that reading this if those beaver baffles are not effective there's no out for us. Yeah. They're not effective, they're not working, we, then we can't take and get rid of the damn beef. <laughs> so I think we need to have a look at that, yeah. what they're willing to give up on that contract. Yeah. Because ultimately it comes down to what the, you know, the, the property damage. Right. Especially if it's uh, washing out the road or anything like that. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Approval of licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. I make the motion to approve payroll warrant 23-13 for payroll from December 4th to December 17th, 2022, paid on December 21st, 2022, in the amount of $66,716.02. Also payable warrant 23-G11 with checks 22-533 to 22-566 for payables in the amount of $99,880.09 and the November general journal entries. Is there a second? A second. Any discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, Vince, a liquor license here and cigarette. Yeah, that's the that's the one that was discussed when uh, Mr. Legu when he was here at the last meeting. We never went through and formally approved the, their uh, their new license. 
I make the motion to approve the class two liquor license um, as discussed at the December 5th board. You have tobacco um, too. Hmm? There's tobacco in there too. Oh, and a tobacco license. Yes, I see that now. And, and that's for Maplewood Convenience Stores Incorporated. Yeah. Yes. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, motion carries. Yeah. I, my phone keeps going in and out on me. Yeah. And, um, let's see here. Approval licenses, permits, and vouchers. Uh, approval of the minutes from December 5th. And notwithstanding, sounding like a broken record, but I approve them with grammatical changes and additions and some. Um, removal of sentence structure and names and I've made notations and I'm going to give that to Vince and he'll see to it those are made as needed. Comments. Exactly. I make the motion to approve the minutes of December 5th, 2022 with comments. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, round table, Dave? No, I don't have anything. Well, no, thank you, though. Joe? Um, just want to mention again that the Berlin Fire Department has a open position for town resident to be on the board of directors. Um, that position is approved by the select board. So anyone interested, um, contact your local selectman. A motion to adjourn. I make the motion to adjourn tonight's regularly scheduled select board meeting. I second, I second it. <laughs> <laughs> all those in favor? Aye. 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 There we go. Have a good night, Dave. Have a good night, Dave. Thank you. Thank you.